Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation. My name is Deidre Lee. I am a rising senior and physics major at the University of the Virgin Islands. This summer, I was honored to work on, in Dr. Jeffrey Zahn's lab on a project entitled Finite Element Modeling of Electroporation Phenomenon Using Microfluidic Devices. Electroporation is a commonly used non-viral method for intracellular delivery. So intracellular delivery or the trans cell transfection of biomolecules is basically the permeation of the cell membrane for the loading of foreign substances like drugs. And this plays a big major role in immunoengineering research. So non-viral methods, meaning that they do not use a virus, are preferred due to the harmful effects associated with viral methods such as cytotoxicity, which is one example. So electroporation is considered safe, it is fast, it is considered easy to operate, and it's relatively cheap and effective. So electroporation is a technique which involves applying an electric pulse to the cellular membrane, and this induces a potential difference in the membrane, making these temporal pores as seen in figure one. So you see the, the straight phospholipid bilayer, and the voltage is applied, and it starts to split and cleave, and forms these pores which are intended to be reversible. So after the electric pulse is applied, the, the pores are formed, molecular molecules pass through, and then the submembrane is supposed to form back and like, heal itself. So due to this technique, it is crucial to obtain effective delivery without killing the cell, make, making sure that the processes are irreversible. Okay, you don't want the, the pores to be permanent because the cell will die. So our microfluidic platform solve these issues while enhancing overall success rate by adding more control and using less voltage. So we use computational models in the design process as they can identify a design for optimal results. And that's essentially what my project leads into, which is to design a computational model of cell interactions with an electric field and to show the cell membrane becoming permeabilized when changing the membrane resistance. So these, these steps were done in COMSOL Multiphysics version 5.4 and tutorials, electric field from a charge fair, controlled micromixer and contact impedance were done to allow us to become acquainted with the software and to use these techniques to solve our problem. So the electric field of a charge fair allowed us to calculate the electric field and electric potential in and around the solid charge fair, which helps us to build a cell later on. And that is, so figure two shows like a mesh plot of the electric charge fair, which I did in console. And the next image, figure three, is a result of the contact impedance tutorial, which teaches us how to delay or prevent the flow of current. And which is essential because we want to apply a pulse. We want to apply the electric field and stop it. So we want to be able to control the electric current. And this image, figure three, just shows the, the circles are representative of the, the cell membrane and it shows the voltage field around it, the electric field lines and the current density. And finally, the micromix, control micromix of tutorial shows us how to apply a stream that is in contact with the cell for a control period of time. So it controls the flow rate, which means we can control the amount of biomolecules we can introduce into the cell by our diffusion. So figure three is showing the velocity field where viscosity is concentration dependent. So this sums up. So these tutorials bunched together gives us the tools to, to make the steps of to make my project, which is to create a cell with a charge inside and outside of that that has a controlled flow current in order for us to electroporate the cell. Then we introduce a diffusion micromixer that controls the diffusion of the biomolecules into and out of the cell membrane. So with computational models, we have to be able to validate them so to make sure that when we take them to the experimental platform, that they actually work. So validation includes numerous of things, which is included in my future work, um, which is to validate the transvoltage membrane, make sure that it is the same voltage being applied, um, validate that the angle of 
his transmaker voltage is greater on the cathodic side than the anodic side. And also we are verifying the conductivity within the cell and the external medium. And, and then later on, we will apply these to the microfluidic properties. So these are the steps in how to solve my objective, solve my problem. So I think I'm a little bit over time. I hope you understood my project. Thank you so much for listening. It was an honor to work on this this summer. And I would like to thank Dr. Zan for having me this summer in his lab. I would like to thank Christopher, his master's student, and Upasana Gosh, and some other undergraduate students for helping me with this project. I am so grateful for the rise at Rutgers for accepting me, and I'm thankful for NSF funding.